Close. That's a that's a media show. GMB is subconscious. Actually, it's very powerful. Time value of money. Okay, so it's in yesterday's notes. The lesson's online. If you didn't get it, go see it. But we're still doing it. Two more examples. How long will it take to be a millionaire? How much money do you need to be a millionaire? Does that sound like someone who's rich? A million dollars is what? Well, yes and no. I mean, you're still a millionaire. The thing is, yeah, with inflation, a millionaire in 1960 was worth a lot more than a millionaire today, but you'd still rather have a million bucks than not, right? If you're a millionaire, you're still a millionaire. It's still a lot of money. Okay? Just because you live in a million-dollar house doesn't mean you're a millionaire, right? The bank probably owns 90% of it, maybe. A lot of times they do. A lot of people out there make a lot of money. That doesn't mean they have any. Just because they can afford to live there doesn't mean they got a million bucks in the bank. So, how long will it take to be a millionaire? If you deposit a hundred bucks a week into, let's call it the S and P 500. The heck's that? Standard and Poor's. Good guess, though. Salt and pepper. Stock market, okay? That's an American kind of stock market. But that doesn't mean it's just American, because I know McDonald's is on the S&P 500. Coca-Cola is on the S&P 500. Is America the only place in the world where people buy Big Macs? No. No. It's a global company, right? They could do really well in Sweden one year, all right? And, you know, you still make money by investing in the American stock market because that's where McDonald's is. Coke, big sponsor of the Olympics, right? What does the stock market get you? Well, it used to have it up until 1890. What is it for a rate of return? What do you think? Long term. In the stock market, what do you get? Sorry? 30? 3? More than that. A little more than that. Good guess. Where the expected long term rate of return. Now, lately it's been more than that. Well, really, really lately it's been less than that. Okay. Last year it was really good, but the last 10 years haven't been that good. But long term period of term, I'm talking 50 years. Over 50 years, what does it get you? About 7% a year. Okay, doesn't sound like much. Some people get a good year and they get 30% and they think, Ooh, I'm going to do that every year. Well, no, because next year it goes down 20%. Then it goes up 10%. Then it goes down 30%. Then it goes up 25%, okay? It's up and down and up and down and up and down. Long term, that's what it gets you, okay? Since the Great Depression, that's about the average of the stock market, okay? Compounded semi-annually. So, Hundred bucks a week. Who's got that? I got another question for you. Who couldn't do that? Once you get to be like twenty-five years old and you get your job, maybe you went to university, maybe you didn't. Maybe you came a plumber apprentice at eighteen, nineteen, and you're already making good coin when you're like twenty. Okay, and you don't graduate when you're twenty-six with fifty thousand dollars of student loans you have to pay back. Started a job that makes half as much as the plumber did. Okay. Um, hundred bucks a week, how much is that a year? Come on, guys. How many weeks in a year? 
5200 is that doable 100 bucks a week that's 200 bucks a paycheck paychecks what 1000 bucks 1500 that's doable especially if you're living at home right totally doable okay how long would it take to be a millionaire because that's kind of like the magic number i got a million bucks why keep working i can retire right maybe maybe not okay how do we do this what's in that's what I'm trying to find. How long, right? N. I don't know what that is yet. Okay, what do I know? I is 7%. That's how it goes in your calculator. What's the present value? How much am I starting with? Shelly? Right, nothing. I'm not starting with anything. I don't have some lump sum I'm putting up and sitting and waiting to see how much it's going to be worth. I'm just starting with $100 payments. Starting at the end of this week. Okay, 100 a week. We're going to assume it's at the end unless it says the beginning of the week. So present value is nothing. Payment, well, I just said it. That's 100. Okay, what else do we have in here? What's my future value? Do I put it in as... Minus one and six zeros, right? One mega dollars. Okay. Payments per year. Hundred a week. How many payments per year? Okay. Yeah, this is the one you're thinking of. Semi-annually, ooh, two. Well, that's how much it compounds. Here, they're different, okay? Because that's what's in our question. It's compounded semi-annually, compounded twice a year, but my payments, I'm putting in 100 bucks a week, right? Okay, that's the only way I'm gonna get 5,200 a year into this investment. If I go twice a year, well, that's only 200 bucks. The calculator needs to know this is how much I'm investing. Okay, so apps. <clears throat> apps, enter, enter. <laughs> we got this. I7. PV0. Payment. like you expect it, you know? <laughs> Future value. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's hard when there's no commas there, right? 12 payments, compounds. Now you gotta change this. It always defaults to the same thing. We just have to manually change it. Payments at the end of the week. Oh yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Not monthly. Weekly. Oh, Jesus. You're right. Two. There we go. Back up. N. Alpha. Solve. That's, hang on, hang on. That's not years, guys, right? That's the number of compounding periods. 2000 and let's just round it. N is 2007, but what does that mean? Okay, how do we get N when we know everything else? Number of payments per year times years. So this is that. The number of payments per year times years is this number, right? So to solve for number of years, I'm going to divide by 52. How many years is that? Thirty-eight and a half years. Is that doable? If you started when you're 20, how old would you be at 100 bucks a week 
to be a millionaire. Let's go 59. Maybe the stock market only did 6.9%, not 7. Is that doable? It totally is doable. This is totally realistic. Go, quick, quick. Messy, messy. Okay. 5,200 a year is doable. Okay. When you're working. This is absolutely obtainable. I'm not flashing you like some sales guy so when you can make 20% per year. Okay, this is realistic. This is time tested, proven. If you would buy a nice invested portfolio in equities, that stocks, you could get 7% per year. Um, and people know this, all right? Young adults are taught this. You go into the credit unions, the banks, they tell them this. How many people actually do it? Maybe half a percent of the population. Why? Simple answer. Because we're Canadians and we like a high standard of living. We would rather spend a hundred bucks a week at Starbucks, at the movies, a nicer car, okay, than have a million bucks when we're 58. Of course, when we're 58, we regret it. Because a lot of 58-year-olds maybe have $200,000 in equity, let alone a million, but you can't turn back the clock, right? Doable, totally doable. Okay. Okay, second one. A child, a grandparents, invest 50 bucks a month. Hey, that's a lot of money for grandparents. You know how much they could have bought back in 1920 for 50 bucks? I'm sure they tell you every time they see you, too. Remember when I was delivering papers? And back when it was $4 a month for the Vancouver Sun, and this nice old white-haired lady, just out of the blue in the middle of summer, gave me a nice shiny dime. <laughs> I mean, you know, what do you do, right? Thanks for the two bubble gum, like after I ride my butt to the corner store to get them. I mean, thank you. But they, some of them still think that's a lot of money, right? Compounded semi annually from when she was born. How old are you when you're born? Right. You're not one yet. You're, yeah, whatever, born. You're zero. You're zero until you're one, but nobody says that, right? First you're days old, then you're weeks old, then you're months old, then you're one. Right? Until she was 18. Okay, 50 bucks a month. Five percent bond, just a name of some investment, compounded semi-annually from when she was born till she was 18. How many years is that? Yeah, piece cake, right? When so we're gonna add something else here. When the grandchild graduated, I'm talking real grad here, not this high school stuff, okay? University, who was I having this discussion with? At age, I can't remember, who was it? Was it you guys? No, I don't think so. No, someone else. At age 26, that was to my when the grandchild graduated from university at age 26, 
it's it's like what's your favorite color? There's no right or wrong. Okay. It's an opinion. It's not a fact. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. They gave the money. How much was it? Yeah, some people are boring lawyers, aren't they? Okay, so let's finish writing that down. Then cognitively analyze it. Why is this question different? Lewis. Correct. So where was the money from 18 to 26? Not in the mattress. Not in the cookie jar. Um, it doesn't say, but I did want to make the question like three paragraphs long. Okay. It will be more explicit in the book and on the test. It's in the same spot. Okay. She contributed 50 a month till she was 18. Then she stopped. But the money's still there. It's still in the same 5% column until she's 26. So this is like two questions in one. Okay? And tomorrow we'll be building into portfolios, not just one investment, but two or three. Maybe different things happen. Okay? So first, we got to find out this is payments. We'll find out how much she has when she's 18. Then we got some future value. Then that becomes the present value for this part. Okay? There's a lump sum at the end of 18 years. And then it sits in some investment at 5%, and then we wait until she's 26, which is how many years? Eight. That's right, boys and girls. Okay? Okay, so two steps here. Okay, that's it. It's not hard, it's just, you know, you haven't seen this before. You just got to think a little harder. Two steps. One. Payments for... 18 years, and then step two, present value well that's how I kind of worded it. For eight years we have a present value. At the beginning we don't, right? We just start with payments. We'll find out what that present value is, compound that semi-annually at 5% for 8 years, and then let's see what the grand total is. And then you'll wish, why the heck did my grandparents not do this for me? Okay, so payments. What's N here? Eighteen You sure enough? Yeah, yeah. okay. How many compounding periods? It says that in the notes. Okay, 12 times a year times 18 years is, what's that? Yeah, I gotta look that up too, I don't know what. Present value, nothing. Payments, 50 bucks. Oh, yeah, right. How come I didn't do that? Interest, 5%. Payments per year, well, it's monthly. 12 payments per year. Compounding per year, semi-annually. That's twice a year. Okay, and it doesn't say otherwise, so it's payments at the end. And what do we get? N, two, one, six. Five. You guys should be quicker than me because I got to double tap every button on here. What'd you get? That's what I got. I got the same. Okay. So that's a future value. That's after 18 years. But for the next part of my question, 1736863. 
173683. That's the present value. Okay? So the future value became the present value. If that's confusing, then, you know, don't worry about it. You just got to understand now this is going to sit here for how long? Yeah, now, do you want to use your calculator or do you want to use the formula? Let's do both. Okay, so now that is my present value. 17, 3, 6, 8, whoop, 0.63. Let's go up at the, at the top. N, what's N here? Eight years from 18 to 26, and how many times a year? Compounds twice a year. So this is a little confusing, okay? That's just the interest. There's no payments here, is there? So if that's confusing, maybe we want to use our formula. I don't know. Okay, so that, 16. Okay, I, same rate, payment. What's the payment? Yeah. Nothing. There is no payment. Future value, I don't know. Payments per year, there's no payment, but when do we get this interest that's compounded semi-annually? That's what compounding means, right? If they don't pay you that interest and compound it, then there is no compounding. This is compounding. It's not simple interest. So I have to go to there. Even though there's no payments, that interest is considered a payment. Okay? So yeah, I know that's confusing. Does that look reasonable? Sure. Okay, payment, payment pre, I'm not going to write that down. So here, after sitting there for another eight years, I get 25,000, 783, and 83. So like I said, let's double check that with the formula. Because we had this down with a formula, no problem, most of us, until we maybe started using a calculator. P, 1 plus R to the N, okay, so what's my present value? That's what I start with, 1736863. What's my rate here? Yeah, and how often does it compound? Twice a year, so I need a semi-annual rate. An N here, see now it makes sense. We've done this before. Eight years, twice a year, this thing compounds, right? It compounds semi-annually. So that's 16. And if we put that in, second function quit, one, seven, three, six, eight, and 63 cents, bracket one, plus 0 0.05, Whoops. to the power 16, we better get the same thing, okay? So my advice to you is um, maybe save the calculator for payments and use the formula for this, and on a test, if I ask, use the formula and you just use your calculator because you know hey that way is easier for me i uh, can't give you full marks you got to know you got to know this way for sure okay you got to know this way for payments using the calculator because that's the only way we can do it if you like this method using the calculator for the second part okay but hey you know if you're making a mistake there don't come crying to me but like I say, if I show, if I say use the formula, you gotta use the formula on the test. <clears throat>
Okay. So, some more of this. Similar to yesterday, just, you know, a couple questions are just a little more involved. Okay, and test won't be this week. Might be Monday, might be Tuesday. 